Hello, thanks for uh, coming this evening. Great turnout. Good to see so many people here. Uh, my name is Arif Khan. I'm the curator of art here at the Play Center. And uh, this is the last in our four-part lecture series on uh, American Prince and Cricket. And um, it's been a, I'm really happy with how this lecture series has turned out. Each uh, one we've had a bigger turnout, and I think people have really engaged with the, the speakers as well as learn more about the exhibits afterwards. Um, this lecture series is uh, supported by a grant from the West Virginia Division of Culture and History and the National Endowment for the Arts, with approval from the West Virginia Commission on the Arts. I'd also like to thank the Elliott Foundation for their assistance in sponsoring the exhibition. Uh, and I'd also like to thank um, exhibits and these programs that don't come off without uh, people behind the scenes. And I would like to thank uh, the team here at the Play Center, Denise Egan, and Mike Ramsey, and Shirley for all their hard work this exhibit, so thank you. Uh, if you've been at some of these talks before, you know I also do uh, an appeal that we're handing around uh, sign-up sheets. These are for uh, surveys we have to do. If you could please just put your name and email, even if you've already done it, this helps us uh, send surveys out, which enables us to get future grants to do more programming like this. Uh, we had a great uh, response for the last one. If you also fill it out, fill out the survey, giving we have a chance to win a copy of the Tamarind exhibit catalog, which is here, it's really nice. Uh, we also have I have five exhibits left for sale. Uh, sorry, five catalogs for sale for this exhibit. Um, they're thirty dollars. If you're interested, you can see me after the five. <laughs> <laughs> So our, uh, the format for tonight's talk, we're going to try to keep it a little more discussion style, so a little back and forth between uh, Leslie and Bill, who are speakers tonight, and myself. So we'll see how this works. Um, I'll uh, introduce Leslie Bill. Throughout her career, Leslie has utilized the expressive potential of printmaking, along with sculpture, photography, and performance to explore themes of language, the body, and transformational experience. The first collaboration with Tamron was in 1994, and that piece, you can see through there, <laughs> the brown background. <laughs> we kind of made that gap for it. Um, and most recently in 2010, um, and that series of prints is what we'll be talking about tonight, is her most recent collaboration with Cameron. Uh, her work has been widely exhibited and collected, and can be found in the collections of the Albright Knox Museum in Buffalo, Cleveland Museum of Art, the Kepner Museum in Kansas City, Metropolitan Museum of Art, Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, and many others. Bill Lighto has been Tamara Institute's master printer and professional workshop manager since 1988. He oversees all aspects of publishing activity, including artist collaborations, edition printing, and the supervision of Tamara's student training program. During his tenure at Tamarin, Bill has worked with over 300 artists and trained 47 or so student printers. I populated these uh, stats for doing this catalog, so I don't remember that entire stuff that you remember me to do. Um, he received his MFA from the University of Utah and, and is also a graduate of Tamarin's Master Printer program. Prior to Tamarin, he served as Master Printer for Vermilion Editions in Minneapolis, SETI Publishing in Tempe, and Paragate Press in Dallas. Uh, join me in welcoming Leslie and Bill. Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, so, is it always this cold this time of year? <laughs> it is. Okay, because I have totally the wrong impression. I grew up in Maine and I live in New York. And I brought this really thin coat because I was expecting daffodils. And, <laughs> and, um, but you're more like on the same weather system that we are on, yeah? Is that true? Anyway, it's really, really nice to be here. I love the quilt. It's so <coughs> okay, then what are we talking about? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, so what we thought we'd do is um, show you some of um, my work that has influenced the work that, that Bill and I do. We're going to talk to you a lot about the nature of collaboration, or we're actually going to just 
talk, or probably fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> as we look at the images. So this is a piece, and it, it was a drawing that I did in my studio, and it's really large. It's five feet by five feet, with the word, I can read it, I'm sure, jubilation. But I'd love the leaves. And then um, this hell piece is a, um, another large drawing, 11 feet by 12 feet. Bill didn't want to go that big. So, uh, yeah. And then this is another newer piece, just a drawing called um, Man City and Radiance. I think you were talking about how these are the pieces that are informing your, your ideas of when you're thinking about coming to channel, correct? Right? That's true. Because actually, the big change in my work is that, and you know, Catherine, it might have been the turning point with your workshop, but I used to always work with stamps. You know, like with stamped alphabets, because that's almost the most primitive, immediate form of printmaking, is you take ink, you take your finger, and you make a print, and that's a print. So, um, so I'd always been using um, stamps for the alphabet, and then I switched to using stencils recently, or it feels like recently, and it gives a more, more bold, more upfront um, look, and I really liked it, so I, I felt that I wanted to act on that and print it and see what, what it would look like small, smaller than 12 feet. So when um, I was in New York for a print fair, and so I went by Leslie's studio to talk to her about what we were going to do on the project, and she had that jubilation drawing on the wall, and I kind of immediately responded to it. I love the shape of the leaves, and just the whole drawing. And so we kind of kind of started there. You know, I said, well, what about this piece? Because she had a whole bunch of stuff up there. She had, Leslie always has lots of ideas. And um, so we kind of started there, and, and the project kind of grew from that. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, my interns and assistants are always surprised when you know, they go to art school and they think the artist has total dominion over everything. And uh, we don't, whether we're working with a dealer or a curator or a master printmaker, we are in partnership and collaboration. So when Bill comes over and has coffee and we hang out, you know, I'm looking for where does he get excited? Because there could be work that I really love, that I would really like to have to make a print out of, but he will be, I know, <laughs> no, no, I don't know no, that over here, um, but uh, yeah, I kind of like that one. So, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, you have to not feel rejected. Okay, and then here are some more. So, I think mm -hmm. Bill and I have both been to Mexico, so I was doing these little skeletons of Right. Well, how big would that be? Was it? Oh, that was a little, little guy. Not that big. But, but you like that. Mm -hmm. And so. So Leslie arrives at uh, Tamarind and the collaboration begins? Well, in a way, it had already begun. You know, because he had done yes, no, yes, no. And then, like Ara said, of course, I just bring maybe 20 other ideas along with me. Right. And then build a very calm there. No, Leslie, I don't think we'll have time. <laughs> we'll just stick to what we're doing. Okay. So, so then there we are deciding what to do first. But, but there was another element, element involved. There was, you had done a project and worked with uh, Paul at Boudinet with yes. the gold paper. That's true. And so she was going to do a print for our collector's club. Um, and since it was our 50th anniversary, she thought it might be nice if she did it on this gold paper that was made at this shop in New York called Houdinet. They, they specialize in works of handmade paper. We'll be seeing that. Uh, yeah, so, so, that so what is a collector's club? Uh, well, a collector's club is, oh, wait, here, here we go, this. here's a pitch for real. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I didn't realize that we did the print for it, and then I, I did it. Too nervous to ask, well, what, what is a collector's club? The <laughs> collector's club is people buy a print sight unseen. We just say it's a, a print by a nationally known artist, and I think it's I think it's five hundred dollars you pay, and so but you don't know who the artist is going to be. So it's kind of a crapshoot. You don't know who you're going to get, 
you know, you might like it, you might not, but you know, that's the way you go. You get, you know, you not spend. Most of these prints are worth a lot more than the five hundred dollars you pay, and uh, so we choose an artist every year, and we don't we don't tell anybody who it is until it gets released you know, in the fall, in November. So it's one way, and it's a fairly big edition. We have to do an edition of it's usually about ninety. And, um, that's probably the biggest edition we do at term. and so we have about ninety collector collectors that pay five hundred dollars each for that. Print. And so Leslie did it two years ago. Yeah. Well, sure. yeah. So it'll, it will come up, the, the piece. So th there we are starting um, with, did we show the drawing before? Oh, that's just coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We actually prepared for you. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We had it all organized. We still have it organized, but it would get a little long. So um, I wanted to know, I asked Bill, what is the yellow? Because now that I'm here, I actually get to ask all the questions that I'm too focused to ask when I'm there. Okay. What is the yellow? Yellow is paper. Yellow? Is well, we use this. It's, a, it's called goldenrod, and it uh, light can't penetrate it. So we use these figures, this kind of sun figure and the skeleton figure. On one plate, we, we, we just want a flat color behind the drawn image of the skeleton. So we, Leslie cut that out very carefully, and then we laid that on a plate, shot a photo plate, and then that became you know, a very transparent color. Because a lot of Leslie's pieces have to do with layering and different papers on top of papers. But we, we knew we couldn't you know, layer like four or five papers on top of each other. So we had to kind of, some of it was collage, collaged on and some of it was printed on. It, it had the look of another piece of paper on top of it. Which, which was amazing, because even now looking at the slides, well, we'll get to the image. But, but keep going. So, uh, what's up here? That's, that's, the, that's the drawing, right? Are you yeah. prepared before coming to town? So this is the drawing that I prepared. And again, loving the comedic kind of dark side of um, skeletons. And then I know this is going to sound so silly, but I love armpits. You know, you know, like if you have an animal like a dog or a cat or a husband, <laughs> you know, it's just this kind of like, it's like this place under your wing where you can kind of like, you know, look in. And also doing a lot of yoga, my yoga teacher talks a lot about wings and you know, opening and stretching out the side of your body that your heart comes out. And I just thought, ah, so much is in there. So I thought, boom, and then rapture and skeletons and you know, would just come out of your armpit. I know when you go home tonight, you're going to have an entirely different relationship. <laughs> so, um, so we, so this is the drawing, and everything was collaged. So I didn't know if Bill would really be up for this cutting out of so many things, because he's threatening. 